Look at this town's garage. Welcome back guys. In this video I will show you how to install a air injection pump bypass kit. The car we're putting this on is a 2007 Toyota Tundra 4.7 liter. Uh, this is the kit we're putting it on. We're putting on. It's a Hewitt Technologies kit, and it's a Hewitt-Tech.com. And this is for. Uh, they make kits for 2005-2014 Toyota Lexus vehicles. And this car is mainly on the customer's property. He drives around the property. But if something goes wrong with the air injection system, the car goes in, into limp mode. Uh, limp mode, I took a picture here of what it looks like. Uh, all the lights go up here. Uh, you have the check engine light, you have uh, the traction control light, and a four wheel drive light. So that's what it looks like when it's in limp mode. And this is what the kit comes with. That's the part number for this. This tells the computer that there's a pump there. Uh, there's a motor there, so what the computer does is if you have a faulty pump, uh, it'll tell the computer there's a faulty pump because the computer sends a signal to the pump, and if it doesn't receive it back, it knows there's a faulty pump, and this throws a code. So this will throw either a P0418 code or a P0419 code. And this pretty much, like I said, tricks the computer to thinking there's a pump, a uh, good pump there. Now this is a bypass kit. We're also putting this in, and that's the part number for that. Now this kit prevents the pumps from starting, so it comes with all everything you need here. Black off page two for the exhaust. So that's everything you need here. So let's begin. First step is let's locate the starter relay. This is the relay and fuse box. Push that down, and this pops up. Now over here, this here says ST. That's the starter relay. So when you look at this location here. You have fuses over here at the end, and you can see fuses up here on top. Then you have one square box, two, three square boxes, and that you go down one. So one square box, two, three, and down one. It's this one here, the relay, for the starter. All right, now these sometimes are very hard to come off. So what I like to do is go underneath the relay with a little flat head and just pry it off a little bit first and then grab it and pop it out just like that. Okay, now you're going to take this purple wire and you're going to put it on this terminal. Do not put it on the copper terminals. You have to put it on one of these terminals. Uh, one is constant 12 volts and one is only 12 volts when um, uh, the car isn't cranking only. So connect it here, and wind it around, and we're going to go in the car and check to see if this has power only when it's cranking. Pop this back in. Okay, now the other end of this purple wire, we have a quick disconnect here. I got a test light, put one end on the ground side of the battery. And the other end over here is going to go and probe this disconnect. Uh, now, we want to see this light turn on only when he's cranking. So go ahead, crank. All right. So that's what you want to see. That's the correct uh, terminal. If that was in the correct terminal, you put it on the other um, non-copper terminal that was on there. All right, now I'm going to make a hole down here to pass the wire through. So, let's get to drilling, boys. All right, so I don't like this because I like to put a uh, heat shrink type of uh, connectors here. So I'm gonna cut this here. And now I'm just gonna route this through this hole that I made. It's just like that. Route the whole wire through there. All right, so that's all nice and neat in there and put this fuse relay box back on. Alright, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this wire in wire loom and zip tie it along the back over there of the firewall. Okay, we routed it along the brake lines over there and zip tied it by the brake lines all the way around. 
Make sure you're avoiding all the heat spots. You don't want this to melt around the exhaust. And routed it right over here. Now over here we're going to put the module. So I got some rubbing alcohol and I'm cleaning the air box over here. Where we're going to mount it. It's nice and clean, baby. Now over here where the master airflow sensor is, we're going to connect this harness. So you push back on this on top, you pinch it, and you pull up, just like that. And now you put one end of this over here, let it click, then the other end goes over here, and you hear that click. And now you can route this underneath, and I'm going to mount it over there by the airbox underneath. Now I cut this to size, the purple wire, and I strip this. So once you strip her, you bend her over, just like that. And we're gonna put a weather tight connector on this. Tug, you're good. And now you warm her up. Now I'm going to dip this in some dielectric grease and pop this on here. Just like that. Now take off this backing of this 3M tape and tape it where we cleaned up the area with the alcohol. and hold that on there for a couple of seconds and we're good all right now the exhaust the black off plates one goes down here on the passenger side and you said the driver's side is on that side I'll show you that when I do it so now over here I have a quarter inch extension a little two inch extension on it so I have a quarter inch ratchet with a little extension on it two inch extension and a deep socket, 10 millimeter socket on there. So, put it on there. I put some coil on here, my favorite butter sauce, before I let it sit for a little while. And now, let's crack this loose. Yeah, baby, that's loose. Now let's crack the other side. Okay, now this side, try to put a wrench on it. <sighs> yeah, baby. Woo! She's tight down there, too. I know. Not you, Brianna. Oh. You're the opposite. Okay, so this is loose, as you can see. Now, I could turn that by hand too. And this is also loose. So thread it out, not all the way out. So this is what they give you. These are the plates. And these are slotted, so you can just insert them down. Make a little space and swim down and tighten it back down. Now we stop the pumps from working uh, electrically with the harness we put in with the module. Uh, this verifies that no air uh, is put into the system here. Maybe if a valve is stuck open or something like that. All right, now I'm gonna insert the block off plate from behind. Just like that. Now I'm just gonna finger tight Tighten these back up. Same thing with the other side. And make sure the plate's still in, which it is. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down. And it's good. And that's good too. Now the driver's side, it's right here. Just use the quarter inch ratchet with the deep socket. So that's loose. 
bring that down. Wait a minute, it's good. And now this side. Now grab the plate and insert it in and tighten that down. And that side's good. And that's good. All right, now for the secondary pump proxy pack. Uh, you have to see what code you have. This is P0419, so that means it's a second there. It's a second pump. Uh, if it was P0418, it's the first one. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. So over here in the engine bay, this is where the relays were and the fuses. Right over here is the pump drivers. So this is for the second, this is for the first uh, pump drivers. So P0, sorry, P0419 is located in the front of the vehicle. So it's this one right here. All right, now over here, what you gotta do is you gotta put a pick in here to take these terminals out. And what I do is slide the pick here behind the weather pack to the weather seal, weather tight seal, and just slide forward like that. Right. Now once this is slid forward, you can put the pick in here to press down this tab. See this one here is missing already. It's out. So you press down on that and you pull out from behind. So press down on that and see if I could do it with one hand. like that now there was an issue here this actually broke it disintegrated in here because there was water in here and it corroded and it broke so this was the initial problem but the customer came here with the kit already and he wanted the kit installed either either way so we're gonna go ahead and continue with this install all right now over here uh, the one that we're gonna be replacing is the one that doesn't have constant power as you can see here this has constant power so we're not going to replace in this one. We're going to replace in this one with this new uh, kit over here. We're going to cut this out, put it here, and this is going to go in here and put this back into the harness. Okay, so this has a 3M double-sided stick tape on here too, but the customer just wants to zip tie back here. So that's all we're going to do is zip tie this. We got some big zip ties, and we're going to stick this in here and zip tie it to this harness. And that's mounted. Now from the proxy pack, there's a ground. Route over here to the ground, negative ground from the battery. That's a 10 millimeter bolt. Get a little wire brush, and you can clean this also out. Comes out nice and shiny, baby. Just back on, and tighten her down. And you're good. Okay, now I have some dielectric grease. And I'm gonna put some back here. Because we had an issue with this when it corroded. It leaked past the seals. So I'm gonna pull all around here. Make sure this whole thing is sealed over here. Because we, we got a new driver. Install that. Okay, now put this one in here. This is slid out still. So you put it in from behind. And you heard that click. And now this one. And that one clicked too. So you can tug on both of them, they're not coming out. Now I gotta push this back in. And you're good. Now pop this in. And you're good. And this one here was the one I just cut and I put a cap on it and I taped it. And I used that terminal over here. I spliced into that. So we're all done. All right, so now we're just erasing the codes and there's no more check engine light. So that's how you bypass a uh, small air pump. Thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel, like me, share me, also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. 1969. Also check out my 
new swag in the link below where the description is. See ya!